Hello people, thank you very very much for joining me on this video and this is a, 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 a different type of video to what I've ever made before because um, we're getting very very close to the American election on November the 6th when we, we look at who's going to be the new president of the United States of America and uh, I, I do have uh, some concerns and I'm sure I'm not the only one, I'm sure there's probably several million people. And it's, the impetus to start this video was announcements made um, on the news yesterday that several countries, in, in particularly Europe, etc., are gearing themselves up just in case Donald Trump is elected in just in case Donald Trump is elected into the, the the office of president of the United States as the 47th president. And it's, it's concerning many countries and how they're going to have to adapt to that. <laughs> There's a bird chirping away in the background. I hope it doesn't detract too much from this from the, the video, and I'm sorry about that if it, if it puts you off. Anyway. Over the years, you know, I've worked uh, quite, a, quite a lot with the Americans in different areas of the world, um, specifically, obviously, in the oil and gas industry, because we, we, we all tend to be the specialists and work together. And I've got to say that e even during those times, particularly when I was working in uh, Africa and Nigeria, etc., that the... I did have concerns about the intellectual ability and the the whole um, the whole way people reacted. The Americans that I met, how they how they presented themselves, they weren't nearly as clever as they, they thought they were, um, and but they did believe that they were the the, the, the kings of the world as, as far as they, as far as oil recovery was concerned. And they certainly weren't, and they weren't as clever as they, they, they thought they were. I also found them uh, abusive and very racist, particularly in Africa, uh, and particularly um, contractors that were coming from the states in the, the, the southern states of America, where they still have this uh, outlook about black people, etc. And uh, in, on one particular job I was working, there was a, a guy from Louisiana in Nigeria. He was sent over as a, a trainer to train some of these black, uh, black guys, the younger guys, on practices on the rigged floors, etc. And he was very, very abusive to them and very, very racist to them. And it ended up when he flew off the rig and got back on, on shore, that there was a group of guys waiting for him and they, they killed him. They, they, the way he used to treat them and talk to them, they were waiting for him in Calabar in Nigeria and when he landed from the rig, they, they dealt with him. And I, I met many people that had that sort of attitude that were Americans and it did concern me a lot then at the general intellect and ability of a lot of the American guys I was working with. I know a lot of people will say it's none of my business and it's all to do with America um, and I shouldn't worry about it, but I am worried about it. I think we're in a very, very unstable situation at the moment and uh, the instability in America is even greater that's uh, emulating out to the rest of the world and the, the, we're getting pushed in different directions. There's, we seem to have several ticking time bombs with uh, Israel and Ukraine and China and North Vietnam, uh, North Korea, etc. And uh, we, we, we're in a very, very dangerous period of this, uh, of our time. And because of the, it's making it worse because of the uncertainty about the American leadership in the very near future. And I am concerned about it, yes, I am. I have had the opportunity and often good fortune to, to visit the United States of America and, and several cities as well. Um, and a lot of that's good. And there's a lot of it that's bad, you know, because I have certainly witnessed some 
horrific things in America that, that reflect very, very badly on the country. Let's talk about poverty and the homeless. Walking the streets of a lot of the major cities, you see it firsthand. The people that have got no money, got nowhere to live, they're begging for food. Um, there's very few people interested in their welfare or a good being at all. And that's very, very sad, you know, it's, uh, that so many people can be out in the street. This is supposed to be the land of opportunity and the land of the free. The, these people have no opportunities. And the, yeah, they're free, they're free, but they, they've got nothing, absolutely nothing. They haven't even got a pot to piss in, and that's, that's saying it straight, you know? The amazing thing, the amazing thing that I find is that all these people are, are totally visible all over the place. But life must go on. And it seems like to the normal, average American, they don't even see the problems. Life goes on around about all these people sleeping on the pavements and living in their cars. and uh, That's just the way of life in America now. And it's accepted. And that, that's wrong and it's, it's bad. Let's move on to the drugs now. You know, I understand the, the problems on the, uh, the borders, particularly the southern border there, where there's a, a huge amount of drugs coming across that way, the fentanyls and all these other newly construed uh, type of drugs that, that's being brought across. And to a waiting huge market, millions and millions of drug addicts in America that are waiting for whatever they can get across the border. Of course, it's not only the border, it's coming in in other areas as well. We know that, and uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure America is, is, and the uh, marvelous DEA, Drug Enforcement Authority, Intelligence, I'm sure they're aware of it all, quite, quite positive. But once again, all these druggies, you see them. You can see them openly walking around uh, and being sick and lying, sleeping everywhere. Or you don't even know if a lot of them are alive and it's that bad and it's that serious. There is people dying on the streets and uh, from drug abuse. So the, the, whole, the whole thing is bad enough. But when we consider also that a lot of these abusers of drugs were self-generated within the country by the, the medical uh, aspects that have been, were, were um, prescribing opioids to right across the, the broad range of patients. If you've got a pain, we've got an opioid that can help you. Yes, it helped and it took away the pain, but it, it set the recipients of these opi opioids Many of them, it set them on a, the wrong road and it, it, they might have got rid of their pain, but it might have ended their lives or set them on a, into a very, very bad situation. And it's so self-generated. And it, it seems like many times nobody really, really cares because that doesn't make money. That's just an embarrassment that goes on in the background. We are a first world country in America. That is not us, but it's there. And I find that disgraceful, actually. You know, when you, you travel around this world and you to all the various places, and when you watch the news, you, you, you don't even have to travel. You can see it on the news that uh, America set itself up. America has set itself up as the, the controlling, the controller of uh, the world. And they, they try to influence all the important aspects that are in the American interest to have an influence over. Mainly in the past for the oil and gas aspects that are available throughout the world. A lot of people in America, in the US of A, have been brainwashed into thinking that they are the world's elite. They are the best in the world. You see it everywhere. Even the expats that have moved out and live in other countries, uh, even around me, I, I'm here in Thailand. I'm, I have Americans here. A lot of the guys, absolutely super guys, but you do get some real assholes that think they know better than anybody and uh, they, they really are, can be the bottom of the barrel as far as human uh, 
can be counted. Some very, very pathetic Americans around about. Even here in Thailand, we see the ignorance and, and racism, even against Thai people. Um, and I've, I've witnessed it in Africa, I've witnessed it here. The, the, it's, it's wrong and it's because of this mental attitude that we are the greatest nation on earth and we are the best and nobody can say any different. Well, we do say different because you're not. Let's just look at the constitution. The longest running uh, in still in force government document in the world has been in force since 1789, 250, 235 years old. That's how old it is. And we've got to protect it, not amend it and really uh, look at it closely and see what's still relevant and what's not relevant. You know, the rest of the world tends to live in a, a dynamic aspect because things are changing all the time and rules, regulations, what we think, what we do, has got to be dynamically controlled to, to meet the, the current circumstances. Everywhere except, of course, America. The document that starts with, we the people. But let's just look at the Second Amendment of the Constitution, the right to bear arms. One of the most provocative aspects of that Constitution that really, really needs to be looked at closely. Unfortunately, it's, it's protected as much as possible by the, uh, the Rifle Association or whatever they call themselves. That they, they don't want any changes to this at all because all Americans should have guns. No matter how many children are getting shot and killed in the schools, Americans should have guns. No matter how many innocent people are getting shot dead in their homes, in the streets, through the, the ca people carrying guns, we need to protect the Constitution. Is that right? You're, you're one of the few countries in the world that actually um, still have this idea of letting people carry guns around. You're not the only one, but you're, you're certainly the most major one, that's for sure. And uh, it's time somebody and some of these governments, instead of all the heckling each other, etc., and o over niff naff and trivia, they start addressing real, real problems that need to get changed. The poverty, the drugs, the guns, all these aspects need more consideration. Now, if we actually take a look at uh, America's reputation as one of the, as, a, as the leading world policemen, as the, the, the guidance factor for many countries and what they've actually achieved, you know, as I say, I live in Thailand and I've actually had the opportunity for us, I live here, to visit Vietnam. And now that's a very, very sad story. I don't know if you agree or not, but it is. And I don't even know how many, many Americans are aware of exactly the atrocities that America took part in while they were engaged with, in the conflict in Vietnam. It's disgusting the way they treated people. The Viet, when they were working against the Viet Cong, indiscriminate killing, uh, killing large numbers all the time without any question if it's Vietnamese, it's probably v Viet Cong, kill them. And when they did take prisoners or, or, or lock, lock them up, locked them in cages that a dog couldn't fit in, etc. It was very, very sad if you go and see that. How many people died? How many Vietnamese? Uh, how many Americans died? Unnecessarily. How many Australians? They were involved as well. It's, uh, and what happened in the end? America pulled out. A failure, an absolute failure to, con to control communism from the north. Um, not one of your proudest moments, I think. Now let's then move on to Iraq. And this is a one that I, another area that I, I feel particularly conscious about because we in the UK took part in this as well. And we moved in through uh, information obtained by the, the country with the best intelligence and services in the world that stated quite categorically that the Iraq had 
weapons of mass destruction, Mr. Bush. And then they went and told UK about it, we have this evidence, etc. And our weak leadership in the UK, yes, Mr. Bush, yes, Mr. Bush, we'll help you out here. So they moved in and they bombed hell out of Iraq and they, they caused havoc. They instigated a change of regime um, and in the end, there was no weapons of mass destruction. It was a total lie. They lied to the world. They lied to the UK. And they, they, they done unnecessarily damage and horrific problems, lots of deaths, etc., in Iraq. And then what happened? They pulled out and left them to it. Another wonderful unsuccess story for America. And then more recently we have Afghanistan, where uh, the GOP are blaming the Democrats for getting it all wrong, but the GOP had their opportunity as well. And they, they, they carried on. Both parties are, are, are to blame here. They, they took up a, a battle against uh, Afghanistan, sent thousands and thousands of troops in there, lots of people killed, etc. And then in the end, what did they do? They pulled out and left them to it because they couldn't beat them. They, they, they couldn't learn from the British. They couldn't learn from the Russians. They thought America can do it where everybody else has failed. <laughs> but, but they failed as well. Vietnam, similar to Afghanistan, these were the locals. These didn't care about how big the country thought they were. They, they could take on anybody, and they did, and they won. And America was embarrassed again. I just want to move on to the, the bit that really concerning me at the moment, and that is the upcoming election very, very, very soon, 6th of November, where we're going to see the, the country go to vote. And my big concern is that how can half the population, half the population, not see the problems associated with nominating Donald Trump as the president of the United States. Um, a convicted felon, somebody that almost caused a civil war, somebody that's been convicted of a rapist, that's got several felonies waiting to be answered, that's been waiting to be punished, possibly sent to prison for things that he's already done. His stakes are very high because if he doesn't make president, he's got a choice, president or prison. That, that seems to be his, uh, his options to look at in the future. I am really, really hoping that we see Kamala Harris as the nominated as president for the, for the future. Not that I've got any um, love or loyalties to uh, the Democratic Party, but it's just, to me, it's the only option. The, 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 the other option, really, it, to me, is unbelievable and it's, it's really a sad thing. As I said, a lot of countries are worried now how they're going to adapt if Donald Trump gets into power. If people in America um, don't put Harris into power, then the whole world has got problems. You're not only voting for America, you're voting for stabilizing the world and I hope you get it right. So just to conclude, I would just like to say God bless and God save us from the USA.